Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ryan Retro channel. In today's video, we're going to be looking at a new application called Game Native. This is based on Pluvia, an application I made a video about before, which lets you play your Steam games on Android. That application was really exciting because it simplified installing your Steam games. You simply just picked the application from the list and hit the install button. But there were a few problems with it. The first problem was almost no game even worked, and the second main restriction of the app was that it only worked with DRM-free games. Any game with any kind of copyright couldn't even be launched in the first place. Game Native is built upon Pluvia and aims to let you play any game, whether it's DRM free or not. When you first load up the app, you will be required to sign in using your username and password or a QR code. I would highly recommend using the QR code so that nobody can gain access to your Steam information. The application is actually open source, so you can check all of the code by yourself, but I haven't done that. So I cannot tell you definitively it's the most safe application in the world, but other people can check it by themselves. It's all open and free to check. So I would like to think they're not hiding anything in plain sight, but I do want to give you that warning that I've not been able to check it by myself. So do use your own due diligence and check it out before you give up any of your information. But if you do use the QR code to log in, as far as I'm aware, they can't gain any of your information except that token that the QR code generates. But that expires after like a minute or so anyway. So I would definitely recommend using the QR code instead of putting in your username and password and you should be fairly safe. But again, just please don't take my word on it. So now when logged into the app, you have all of your games here listed on the game list to the side. And if you want to install one, like let's say Game Dev Tycoon, you simply press the open button and then hit the install button. It'll tell you how much space the game is going to take up and it'll also let you know how much space you have left on your internal storage. As unfortunately, this only works with the internal storage and not external SSDs or SD cards yet. So if you're happy with how much space it's going to take up, hit proceed and apparently it's going to crash because this app is still pretty unstable. That is something I was going to get onto soon, but I guess it kind of jumped the gun for me. So yes, the application is unstable. Do expect crashes. Do expect to see this, oh, sorry, I crashed screen about a thousand times, but let's just jump straight back into it and try again. And this time it is installing now. So when it does work, it is a very simple procedure. It downloads and installs pretty quickly as well. So let's leave this for a minute to download and install. We'll open the game and I'll talk to you more about my experiences with the app so far. Once again, we get another crash, which as I said, is to be expected at this point. It's a very new application. We can jump back in and over here, we can hit the filter button and choose installed games. Now you're only going to see the games you've installed already. So it's much quicker to browse through what you want to open. And let's try to open it one more time we get another crash. So maybe that game is not going to work yet. And that is a recurring theme of this app. It feels like the video is getting a little bit miserable. So let me take this time to open some games that did in fact load up and were playable. Let's start with Evo Land 2, which is a game that works pretty easily on pretty much any Windows emulator I've used so far. Except this one, apparently. I've been trying to launch games for about 10 minutes at this point and none of them work. It may be because I recently updated the Retro Pocket 5 to the recent firmware. So I'm now going to completely uninstall this app, wipe everything, install it again fresh after installing the update, and I'll get back to you in a second. One hour later. Hello again from one hour into the future. I just realized there's a new update for this app that does seem to fix the games not launching, at least some of them. So I reinstalled the app, I reinstalled games, and now let me show you the current state of the application. Here is Stardew Valley. You'll see the resolution is all wrong. We can actually fix that by going into the container settings, but it's not going to be necessary for now. There is no gamepad support, although Stardew Valley is notorious for this with emulation, but we can use the mouse support and we can try and load one of my Steam saves. Unfortunately, it just gets... And here is my Steam save. I was about to tell you that it doesn't load the save. But now, for the first time while recording, it actually sees my save file from Steam. So let's see if we can load this up. Unfortunately, it did crash back out to the main menu. Stardew Valley is a game that is not really working on here, but there are some games that are working. So let's jump into Evoland 2, one of the easier games for these applications to emulate. 
This game boots up pretty quickly because it's quite a small and lightweight game. Once again, you'll see some of the text cut off because of the resolution of the container, but once we're actually into the game, that should be fine. This one does have gamepad support right out of the gate, and you'll see here I can actually continue my previous game that I played using Pluvia on this device a few months ago. So it is actually seeing my Steam save file and loading my Steam save. So this is very encouraging. So this is a good glimpse into what this application could be with a few more updates, some more games working well. This is a really nice, really easy way to get into our Steam games. Let's now exit out of this, which is also very easy to do by just swiping back, hitting exit, and we're immediately back into our game selection screen. I did try some other games like Portal 2, which unfortunately didn't open. Slay the Spire launches into the container and really gets my hopes up by showing the Slay the Spire window, but it eventually just crashes back out again. So that's one that I feel could work in the future. And Game Native does let us modify the container settings. There's a lot we can do here. Changing the driver between Vortec, Turnip, or Virgil. Changing the graphic driver version, the DX wrapper. There's so many settings we can go in and modify. So we may be able to get some more games working. And if any of you watching want to help me put together a compatibility list for this app, I'm more than happy to add this to my website. Let me show you a kind of best case scenario for installing a game on here. Here's a very small game called Isle of Jura. It's only 500 megabytes in size. If we hit the install button and proceed, you'll see it installs very, very quickly. And I mean very quickly. I'm not going to skip any part of this installation procedure. Just watch that download bar come along and it's already ready to open. And now after barely one or two minutes, the game has fully loaded up. Unfortunately, it doesn't support our controller input, even though this game does have at least partial controller support. So while it's not the most comfortable game to play, it installed very quickly as you saw. So that does give kind of a glimpse to the future of this application. When more games are running nicely, we can install them very quickly, jump into them, and hopefully get some really nice Steam game experiences. Because the games that did work, like Evoland, do support cloud saves. Stardew Valley also saw my cloud save, but unfortunately couldn't load it. So there is a lot of potential here. But as you saw, it's also very buggy. I don't recommend using it now. And there are also two huge problems with this app. The first problem is just being in this game selection screen absolutely kills the battery. I lose so much battery life in this application, even when I'm not running a game. It also makes the device get really hot as well. Something about this application is just really killing the device. I don't know what it is, but it gets burning hot, the fans are blasting, the battery life is falling down more than almost any game. So there's clearly something they need to fix in the code here. And as it's open source and anyone can go look at the code, hopefully somebody can find a solution for that. One thing I will say is it does seem improved since the recent update I just installed midway through this video that came out on the day of filming this. It does seem a little bit better. It's not nearly as hot as it was before. It's actually running quite cool now since the latest update, but the battery life is still just slipping away. In between filming different shots for this video, I had to keep connecting my charger, which is something I've never done for any video shoot with the Retroid Pocket 5. So definitely there is a problem here in terms of battery drain with this app that I hope gets sorted soon. And as you saw, most games don't load. But the games that do load, like Evo Land 2, it couldn't be simpler to download, install, and jump into a Steam game. So I really hope people will continue to work on this, to develop this, because I really believe this could develop into one of the best Android gaming applications we have. So I do want to keep positive about this. The current state is not good, but it does have a great deal of potential. And let me also just quickly go over some alternatives to this app. The first option would be Steam Link the official Steam app that lets you connect to a computer running Steam in your home and stream your games over to your device. There are other alternatives for this, like Sunshine and Moonlight, the newer versions Artemis and Apollo, which get really good reviews. And we also have other options too, like WinLater or GameHub. And I've made videos on these in the past that you're free to check out. And I'm also considering making my own guide for this as well. So let me know if you're interested in that. 
The method I'm using most often these days is GeForce Now. This lets you connect to a lot of your Steam games, although not the whole library, and stream them over the internet. The downside with this is it's a paid service. You do have to pay around $15 to $30 a month. I actually just upgraded to the $30 a month service so I can play 120 FPS games on my Odin 2 portal, which I'll be making a video about soon as well, so watch out for that. So if the games that you have and want to play are available on GeForce Now, it's definitely a really nice option to just be able to play them on any of your devices. It's just streaming, so it uses almost no battery life, the device doesn't warm up at all, and the performance is excellent. But the obvious downsides to that are you need to pay monthly for it, and you need at least a good internet connection to stream it over the internet. So if we could get some good updates to game native, I think this could develop into the best solution of all. You're able to access all of your Steam library, install a game with the touch of one button, and get gaming completely for free. I think this could be revolutionary. Right now, it's terrible. But the future could be incredible. Thank you for watching this video. Please give me a like and subscribe if you didn't already, and I'll see you again in the next one.